If you could drain the Pacific Ocean, just pull the plug and watch the water swirl away, you wouldn't just see a sandy bottom. You would see a landscape more alien, more violent, and more scarred than the surface of Mars. And sitting there, about a thousand miles east of Japan, hidden in the crushing darkness where sunlight has never touched, is a monster. For a hundred years, we looked right at it and didn't see it. We thought it was a mountain range. We thought it was a cluster of islands. But we were wrong. It's a single, continuous beast. A structure the size of New Mexico. A geological giant that has been hiding a secret so massive it rewrites the history of our planet. And the craziest part? We are only just now, right now, figuring out what it actually is. You have to understand how little we actually know about the ground beneath our feet. We call this planet Earth, but that's a marketing lie. This is planet ocean. 70% of our world is covered in water, a chaotic blue blanket that effectively blinds us. We have mapped the craters of the moon and the canyons of Mars with higher resolution than our own seafloor. Down there, in the abyss, there are canyons deeper than the Grand Canyon and plains wider than the Sahara, existing in perpetual freezing night. And in the early 20th century, sailors dropping lead weights on long ropes found something down there. They found a rise, a massive elevation in the rock. They called it the Shotsky Rise. It was enormous. For decades, the best geologists in the world looked at their primitive maps and nodded. It's an oceanic plateau, they said, a graveyard of volcanoes. The theory was logical. Over millions of years, dozens of different volcanoes erupted, spewing lava that overlapped and merged until it looked like one big mess. It was a chaotic city of mountains. That was the story. It was safe. It made sense. But nature doesn't care about what makes sense to us. Enter William Sager. He's not an armchair scientist. He's a marine geophysicist who has spent more of his life rocking on the waves than walking on solid ground. In the early 90s, while working at Texas A&M University, he started obsessing over a specific bulge on the Shatsky Rise. They named it Tamu Massif, T-A-M-U, short for Texas A&M. It wasn't a name born of mythology, it was a stamp of academic curiosity. Sager looked at this thing and saw something that didn't fit the City of Volcanoes theory. It looked too smooth, too unified. But how do you x-ray a mountain that's buried under four miles of water? You use sound. Sager and his team used seismic reflection technology. Think of it like a planetary ultrasound. A ship blasts a high-powered sound wave down into the abyss. That sound wave punches through the water, hits the rock, and penetrates deep into the crust. It bounces off layers of ancient lava and echoes back to the surface. By timing those echoes, you can draw a map of the inside of the Earth. When the data came back, it was shocking. If Tamu Massif were a cluster of volcanoes, the image should have been messy. Conflicting angles, overlapping cones, a geological car crash. But the image was clean. It showed massive, unbroken sheets of lava, layer upon layer, stacking up like a terrifying wedding cake, all sloping away from a single, central point. This wasn't a city. It was a single building. It was one volcano. To be absolutely sure, they had to touch it. They sent a drill ship out, a floating oil rig designed for science, and bored 170 meters into the flank of the beast. Seiger called it pin-pricking an elephant, but that pinprick was enough. They pulled up cores of basalt rock. The lava flows weren't thin and choppy. They were massive, thick slabs of rock, some 75 feet deep. And chemically, they were identical. It was the same magma, from the same source, pouring out over and over again. In 2013, the team dropped the bombshell in Nature Geoscience. Tamu Massif was officially the largest single volcano on Earth. The stats are nauseating. It covers 120,000 square miles. That's the entire British Isles. It's the size of the state of New Mexico. The biggest active volcano we have, Mauna Loa in Hawaii, 
is a pebble compared to this. Mauna Loa covers 5,000 square kilometers. Tamu covers 300,000. It's 50 times bigger. It's so big it shouldn't exist on Earth. To find a rival, you have to leave the planet and look at Olympus Mons on Mars. But here is the thing that makes Tamu Massif truly ghostly, its shape. When you think volcano, you think Mount Fuji. You think of a sharp, jagged cone piercing the sky. Tamu is different. It is a shield. It is low, broad, and terrifyingly flat. Its slopes are so gentle, less than one degree, that if you were standing on it, you wouldn't even know you were climbing a mountain. You would think you were on a flat plain. This shape tells us the lava that built it was incredibly hot and incredibly fluid. It didn't explode. It flooded. It ran like water, traveling hundreds of miles before it froze, building a shield not of height, but of pure, overwhelming width. So, how do you build a monster like this? You need a wound in the world. Tamu Massif sits at a triple junction. This is a rare, violent intersection where three tectonic plates are ripping apart from each other simultaneously. Usually this just makes new seafloor. But beneath Tamu, something else happened. A mantle plume, a blowtorch of superheated rock from the core of the Earth, surged up and captured that triple junction. It was the perfect storm. The plates were pulling apart, opening a door, and the mantle plume kicked it down. For millions of years, the Earth bled lava. It wasn't an eruption. It was a hemorrhage. It poured out enough rock to cover a continent. That was the story in 2013. The textbooks were rewritten. Tamu Massif was the king. But science is a cruel mistress. It doesn't care about your records. It only cares about the truth. And William Sager, the man who put Tamu on the map, wasn't satisfied. There was something that nagged him. Something about the magnetic field. See, the Earth is a giant magnet. And every few hundred thousand years that magnet flips, north becomes south. When lava cools, it locks in the magnetic direction of that moment. The seafloor is usually striped like a barcode. Positive, negative, positive, negative. Recording the history of these flips as the floor spreads out. If Tamu was a single shield volcano, the stripes should be messy or absent. But when they went back and looked closer in 2019, they saw the barcode. The magnetic stripes ran right through the mountain. This changed everything. Again. This meant Tamu Massif didn't grow on top of the crust. It grew as the crust. It was created by seafloor spreading that was just unbelievably thick. It's not a shield volcano like we see in Hawaii. It is a super crust. It's a colossal pileup of new earth, generated at a speed and volume we can barely comprehend. In 2019, Sager had to publish a new paper that essentially dethroned his own discovery. Tamu isn't a volcano. It's something stranger, a hybrid monster of plate tectonics. Now you might see the headlines screaming that this thing is turning dangerous. Let's be clear about the physics here. Tamu Massif is dead. It has been cold and silent for 145 million years. The crust beneath it is thick and healed. It is not going to erupt. The danger isn't to us. The danger was to our ego. It proved that our understanding of the planet is fragile. It proved that we are walking around on a puzzle we haven't even finished solving. Because here is the haunting thought. Tamu Massif is not alone. To the south, there is the Ontong Java Plateau, a feature the size of Alaska. There are the Manihiki and Hikurangi Plateaus, 